director. Who was that man? You won't believe this, doctor. That man was a hired killer who was paid to kill them. I mean, this is the second murder attempt on him in three days since he first appeared in court as a witness. Why are they after this boy? I can't believe it. Now, boys, listen and listen good. You have to be extraordinarily careful here. You must be on the last 24 hours. You have to scrutinize everyone that comes into this hospital, especially into this room. Only the two doctors and three usual nurses attending to Dan should be allowed into this room. No one, I repeat, no one is allowed to come into this room except Anderson and myself. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. I suppose you already know the doctors and nurses. But the doctor here and the other doctor, sir. Sister Stella with her two assistants. That's right, that's right. We'll need more men here. I need two men in here, five at the corridor, and over 20 men both at the front and backside of this hospital. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, doctor, is that okay with you? Not really. We won't be comfortable with the men here. I suggest they be planted just outside the two doors. That's all right, doctor. So, how is he? I think he needs enough of sleep now. Everything will be all right, doctor. Now, boys, I'll remain return back to the headquarters. I'll make arrangements for more men to be sent in here. But before then, be alert. I repeat, be alert. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's been a serious shooting here in the hospital. Second mother had on Dan. Gone man escaped. I need about 25 more men here immediately in order to beef up the stronger security. Over. <laughs> The gunman has again struck in a murder attempt on Dan, late Chief D.K. Donko's son, who was believed dead by the police a month ago. This is the second murder attempt on him in three days. Stanley Johnson has a story. The gunman, who's disguised as a doctor, walked past the policeman on guard duty into the hospital to Dan's room and began to strangle him. When Inspector Mimi Dabol of the FBI got the information, rushed down to the hospital ran into the gunman where the boat exchanged bullets. Critically ill Dan is still on admission at the hospital as a result of the severe bullet injuries he sustained from an earlier attack by an unknown gunman at High Court last Friday. The gunman who stormed the High Court during a court session attacked and shot three times at Dan who was testifying in a suspected murder case concerning himself. In both incidents, the gunman escaped. Meanwhile, it is believed that the famous Ayat killer, Jack Solo, who stormed town about four days ago, might have something to do with the two attacks. Jack Solo was seen leaving the nightclub last Monday, a source disclosed. An FBI official confirmed the story and added that an early arrest of Jack Solo could be expected. I am Stanley Johnson, reporting for TFP TV. Not at all. I'm afraid he is unfit to be moved out of this place now. I'm sorry, Inspector. Maybe in another three weeks or so. Oh, no, no, no. That is much too long. We can't afford to delay this case any longer. Too many people may have to die. So what do you think? Well, um, if you could permit us to put a statement on a videotape so we can present it in court for viewing. That's all right, provided you don't keep him for too long. Uh, not at all. Just a few clarifications, that's all. It's okay, you can carry on. Thank you, Doctor. My Lord, Dan, my supposed next witness, could not appear in court today. Due to last week's bullet injuries he sustained right here in this court after he was attacked by an unknown gunman. Of course, most people here in court know that Dan Ian was attacked by a gunman in a murder attempt only two days after the court incidents. No doubt, Dan is in bad health now. So his doctor had declared him unfit to appear and testify in court. However, I have his witness here on a videotape. May I turn on this videotape as exhibit? Go ahead. Mark it as exhibit A2. 
Thank you, my Lord. But my Lord, before this videotape is played, I have another witness who brought down to the police last week. Ichan Kango. Ichan Kango. Mr. Ichan Kango, would you please remove your skull cap? Sorry. My Lord, this man in the witness box is the man who found Dan and brought him to the police last week. How and where he found Dan, the court will now hear. Who are you? I am Ishan Kango, a vegetable farmer. I have a small coastal farmland at Akabo village, about uh, 60 kilometers south of the river Chaco. I also live there. Now, can you tell the court how, when, and where you found Dan? Uh, one early morning, about a month ago, I went to the coast to my vegetable farm. I was surprised to see what I saw. Then what happened next? A half-dead young man. I took him to my home and quickly called a traditional doctor who attended to him. After five hours of sleeping, he opened his eyes but seemed to know nothing. I tried to inquire about him from him, but he, he, didn't, he could not answer me. The following week, he told me a little about himself. Uh, what and what did he tell you? That he was from Lagos. His father died two years ago. His uncle became bad to him and he did not want to see him again. That uh, his uncle sent him one night to buy suya. That he was on his way there when two men emerged from nowhere. Bam! And he hit him on his head. From there, everything became dark until he opened his eyes in my hut in Akaba village. Then what happened next? I asked him if I should take him to his home in Lagos. But he, he told me he wouldn't re return to his uncle's house again. That he was uh, happy and free in my home. But uh, three weeks later, he asked me to send him to Lagos. One at uh, Anita's uh, house. That was how we found our way to Anita's house in Lagos here. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chankango. The court is very pleased with you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you. My lord, the court has now heard Mr. Chankango, how he found Dan and brought him to the police last week. May I now request the court to play the videotape and hear Dan's testimony? Any cross-examination of the witness from the defense counsel? Yes, my lord. Mr. Ichankango of Akabo village. Yes. Are you educated? Mm, at least I can read and write. That means you are educated. Eh. <laughs> As an educated man, what do you do with a lost and found property? I look for its owner. If you do not find the owner, I send it to the police. Why did you not take Dan to the police when you found him? When I found him, on the coast, in a critical condition. I thought that the best thing to do immediately for him was to save his life. Hence, I took him to a traditional doctor who attended to him. And uh, when he later told me about himself, I suggested to take him back to his home in Lagos. But he refused going back to his uncle's uh, house, that he preferred the same with me. 
Mr. Inchankango, as an educated man, you should have taken down to the police the moment he woke up. Do you know that it is very, very dangerous to keep a missing person? Do. do you know that you could be charged for kidnapping? Besides, that boy told you that he was attacked by two men. He told me to. You should have realized that it was better to take him to the police knowing that that was a criminal case. But no, you kept him with you. You took the law into your hand. You kept him, my lord. I tell it that this witness is false. He was paid to fabricate this story. There's no substance in the story. Objection. My lord, the defense counsel is wasting the time of this honorable court. The witness has just told the court how he brought Dan to Auntie Anita here in Lagos. Auntie Anita is Miss Mimi Dabu, who is a full-fledged FBI officer. What else, what more does the defense counsel want if Dan was safely handed to the police? The prosecuting counsel is right. Since the witness succeeded in bringing Dan to the police, that point is overruled. Any more cross-examination, Mr. Tom Dimeza? That would be all for this witness, my lord. Mr. Anderson? My lord, I request this court to now sit back and watch Dan's testimony on video. Mr. Ichankango? Yes? You may now step down. Court clerk, would you please slot in the tape? Yes, my lord. Things were not the same when father died. My uncle look at hated me so much. He used to beat me almost every day over driving issues. He made me do every job in the house. He never gave me love. He made me do every job in the house. He stopped me from writing my father exams and said to me, I wasn't going to become a great man but a small man. Never gave me love. He often collected money kindly given to me by Anita Anderson. <laughs> One night, he sent me to the slave house to buy him sweet. As I was then to go estate, two men from nowhere came and hit me on the head. I lost my memory. Till I woke up one day on farmers. I remember each has can go hot in a cab of village. He told me that he picked me up at the riverside unconscious. He tried to care of me for three weeks. And later brought me to Anita's house in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that you talk too much. How? Shut up!
there was a murder attempt on you two nights ago. So we want to know how true is that? Well, I was hit by an unknown gunman who probably had a telescopic rifle. I saw no one. The bullet came from nowhere and hit my leg. <laughs> well, I thank God I survived. We're sorry about that. We're very sorry about that, sir. Thank you. But, sir, who do you think is behind this attack and several others? How do I know? The police will find out. Sir, it was widely reported that most witnesses lined up next in this trial have been eliminated in the last three days. And it is believed that Jack Solo, the famous assassin, has something to do with these attacks. Now, sir, do you think there's any link between Luger, the accused, and Jack Solo? The police will find that out soon, too. But there are strong indications that Jack Solo is in town and probably may be responsible for all these attacks. Sir, it is very obvious that your life is now in danger. Do you still hope to continue with this case or you want to drop it? <laughs> Even if it will cost me my life, I will fight on. You see, it's not very easy to serve the law. One has to make sacrifices sometimes if the need arises. Sir, do you think you still stand a chance? <laughs> I thought you had been following this case. I'm shocked to hear that from you. Let me tell you something. This case has come to an end. I'd rather resign from the law practice if I lose this case. Boris Anderson, we wish you a quick recovery and a very good big luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much. Thank you. All right. witnesses lined up next for this case have met their terrible ends. The principal, Ezekiel, Tarfa have been eliminated mysteriously by an unknown gunman. I was also fired at by an unknown gunman in a murder attempt. The proof is seen in my present condition. But the fight must go on. My lord, May I request the court to permit me to bring my last surviving witnesses. Granted. The last but not the least of my witnesses are two young men who are very well known to the accused. The holy men. My lord, these two holy men must be charged alongside the accused Mr. Luger for dance, kidnap, and attempted murder. They are believed to be Mr. Luger's henchmen who carry out all kinds of criminal jobs for him. They probably might have carried out dance, kidnap, and attempted murder. They must have one or two things to tell this honorable court. Objection, my lord. My client is a highly respected citizen in this society and not a murderer or a kidnapper as the prosecuting counsel alleges. These witnesses have no previous link with my client. My lord, this is an attempt by the prosecuting counsel to falsify witness against my client. Overruled. The court will now hear the prosecuting counsel's witnesses. Thank you very much, my lord. Do you know the accused, Mr. Luger, who is charged for his nephew's kidnap and attempted murder? No, no. Have you ever seen him before? No. Think carefully. No. You mean you don't know him and you have never seen him previously? We don't know him. We have never seen him previously. Is this not your statement? No. Whose signatures are these? Ours. Then why are you denying knowing the accused and, and your statement? We signed the statement out of fear. We were badly brutalized by the police and forced to sign the statement. Uh, how can you sign for what you don't know? Objection, my lord. The prosecuting counsel is forcing these witnesses to accept a statement they know nothing about. Look at them, my lord. Anyone who has faced such a Nazi-like brutality would have signed any statement defeatedly out of fear. 
Look at their conditions. It proves my point. My Lord, they have been manhandled by the police to such an extent that anyone will sign any false statement. My Lord, these witnesses do not know my client and they probably have never seen him before. Mr. Anderson, your witnesses are unwilling to testify. I may have to order for this continuation of this examination. My Lord, the witnesses are falsely denying ever knowing the accused or ever having any previous dealings with But my Lord, these pictures here prove beyond any reasonable doubt that they have had business and previous dealing with him and they know him very well. My Lord, here the accused is seen handing over a bag of money and probably international passports to the witnesses. I believe, my Lord, that this was when they were contracted to kidnap Dan and wipe him out and then proceed to Nairobi on vacation. The prosecuting counsel has proved beyond reasonable doubt that their willing witnesses have had previous links with the accused. The prosecuting counsel can now proceed with questioning. Thank you, my Lord. I can see you're badly shocked, and you can hardly believe your eyes. Now, can you tell the court what you know about the accused and Dan's disappearance? If you tell this court the gospel truth, then your punishment will be reduced. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Good. Now, can you tell this honorable court your relationship with the accused, Mr. Luga? Mr. Luga Donko is our boss. But we know him best as uh, Lord Luga. Lord Luga? Why Lord? Is he a judge? Or is he a bishop? Is he a nobleman? Or is he Jesus Christ? He is none of this, uh, but uh, he's the lord of our crime world. Crime world! My lord, this point must be noted. It means the accused could be responsible for all the charges leveled against him and all the other crimes that have been committed in the city since he is the lord of the crime world. Objection, my lord. The prosecuting counsel is wasting the time of this court with irrelevant issues. The case before this court is Dan's case. The prosecuting counsel has no right to link my client with other crimes committed in this city. The prosecuting counsel can continue with questioning. Thank you, my lord. Could you tell the court what and what you do for this, your lord? We frighten his enemies injure some of them and commit theft for him, among other things. But this is our first time of accepting a murder contract from him. Murder contract? Mr. Lord Luger contracted us to kidnap and murder them so that he will be entitled to inherit his legacy. He paid us 300,000 naira to do the job. Then go on vacation to Nairobi, not to return until the heat cools off. Uh, could you please tell the court how it went? How you carried out the murder attempt? I think this honorable court would like to hear the details. About two months ago or so, when Dan was approaching his 18th birthday, Lord Luger called us and instructed us to eliminate Dan convincingly so that he can inherit his legacy. Lord Luger paid us 300,000 naira. Luger planned to send Dan on that fateful night at about 9 p.m. to buy him suya at the Silver Square. He said we should lay ambush for Dan around Kukwe Estate where he was to be kidnapped.
they got information about a planned kidnapping and murder. So they came to save Dan, but they came late. They searched for Dan's unconscious body. They found nothing. They arrested us and forced us to call Lord Luger, telling him that the deal was done. Lord Luger now asked us to proceed on vacation to Nairobi and not to come back until the heat was cool. But we did not go to Nairobi. We were arrested by the FBI men and taken to their headquarters, where we were detained since then. My Lord, I know this happened. <laughs> I told you. They want to turn me to fish. But the truth is that I saw the helicopter. The helicopter was just flying in the sky, carrying many people. And suddenly, the helicopter just moved and landed in the river. And everybody in the river started turning to fish. And they were starting to swim. I was not among them. I was not among them. And I know the game plan is to turn me to fish. Uva! He just landed like that. And then my all Lord. the rest of the turned to fish, my Lord. My Lord. My client is perhaps mentally impaired and hence incapable of standing trial. I request this court to order for a discontinuation of his trial since insane people are not required to stand trial. Objection, my lord. The accused is cunningly putting up this act to escape the prosecution of the law. I am certain he is in a sound state of mind. Hence, I request the court to continue with this trial. Overruled, the accused will be referred to a psychiatric doctor for a critical examination. Eh? I therefore order for this continuation of this trial for today until the accused state of mind is ascertained. Cases are joined to Monday next week for ruling. <laughs> State Psychiatric Center. According to this medical report, the accused, Luga Donko, is in a sound state of mind and of sharp reasoning. The accused, hence, is capable and fit to face trial and prosecution. May I tender this document as an exhibit? Go ahead. Mark it at exhibit A3. As your Lordship pleases. The court is satisfied with the state of mind of the accused. Hence, I now deliver my judgment. After a long period of hearing, Examination and cross-examination of witnesses from both the defense counsel and the prosecuting counsel, it has been proven beyond reasonable doubt that the accused, Mr. Lugardanto, is behind the kidnapping and attempted murder of his nephew, Dan. This court therefore finds him guilty of kidnapping and attempted culpable homicide contrary to section 274 and section 299 subsection 1 of the penal code of Nigeria which constitutes criminal offenses. The accused is therefore sentenced to life imprisonment without option of fine. On the other hand, Dan the heir to late chief D.K. Duncan's legacy will hence inherit his legacy appropriately. This is my judgment. 
as the court places. The courts may now rise. Me. God, God rest. Rest.